the Nanboku-cho period, spanning from 1334 to 1392, was a period that occurred during the formative years of the Muramachi Bakufu of Japanese history. During this period, there existed a northern imperial court, established by Ashikaga Takaji in Kyoto, and a southern imperial court, established by Emperor Godaigo in Yoshino. Ideologically, the two courts fought for 50 years, with the south giving up to the north in 1392. However, in reality the northern line was under the power of the Ashikaga shoguns and had little real independence. Since the 19th century the emperors of the Southern Imperial Court have been considered the legitimate emperors of Japan. Other contributing factors were the Southern Court's control of the Japanese Imperial Regalia, and Kitabatake Chikafu's as work Jino Shotoki, which legitimized the South's Imperial Court despite their defeat. The consequences of events in this period continue to be influential in modern Japan's conventional view of the Tenno Seika. Under the influence of state Shinto, an imperial decree dated March 3, 1911 established that the legitimate reigning monarchs of this period were the Southern Court. After World War II, a series of pretenders, starting with Kumazawa Hiromichi, claimed descent from the southern court and challenged the legitimacy of the modern imperial line which is descended from the northern court. The destruction of the Kamakura Shogunate of 1333 and the failure of the Kamu Restoration in 1336 opened up a legitimacy crisis for the new Shogunate. Furthermore, institutional changes in the estate system that formed the bedrock of the income of nobles and warriors alike decisively altered the status of the various social groups. What emerged from the exigencies of the Nanboku-cho War was the Muramachi regime, the fall of the Kamakura Bakufu. The main conflicts that contributed to the outbreak of the civil war were the growing conflict between the Hojo family and other warrior groups in the wake of the Mongol invasions of Japan of 1274 and 1281 and the failure of the Kamu Restoration, which triggered the struggle between the supporters of the imperial loyalists and supporters of the Ashikaga clan. Disaffection towards the Hojo-led Kamakura regime appeared among the warriors towards the end of the 13th century. This resentment was caused by the growing influence of the Hojo over other warrior families within the regime. The Mongol invasions were the main cause behind this centralization of power that took place during the regency of Hojo Toki Moon. During the crisis, three things occurred. Hojo family appointments to the Council of State increased. The Hojo Private Family Council became the most important decision-making body, and direct vassals of the Hojo were increasingly promoted to Shugo posts. Note they essentially narrowed down their constituents by including only Hojo family members and direct vassals, at the expense of a broader base of support. When a coalition against the Hojo emerged in 1331, it took only two years to topple the regime. Wealth in agrarian societies is tied to land, and medieval Japan was no different. In fact, land was the main reason for much of the discontent among the warrior class. Since the rise of the warriors under the Minamoto, it was expected that victory in battle would be rewarded by land grants given to those who served on the victorious side. However, unlike any war that had been fought until then, the Mongol invasions presented a problem since this war, which was seen by most Japanese as a patriotic duty, did not take place against another warrior family, but against a foreign enemy. After the foreign enemy's defeat there were no lands to hand out to the victors. This was especially a problem for those warriors who had fought valiantly and petitioned the Hojo regents for land. Even in the beginning of the 14th century this discontent put a tremendous pressure on any regime that emerged. They had to immediately satisfy this group in order to succeed. When Kamakura's rule was destroyed in 1333, Kyoto's court society emerged again to confront the warriors. In the transition from the Heian to the Kamakura period, the warriors emerged successfully from the domination of court patrimonialism as an independent political force. 
With the demise of Kamakura, the imperial court attempted once again to restore its de facto power as an alternative to warrior rule. The Kemu restoration was the last desperate attempt on the part of the court to restore their leadership, not just to preserve their institutions. Not until the Meiji restoration of the 19th century did this occur again. The Kemu restoration, 1333-1336 in the spring of 1333, the Emperor Go-Daigo and his supporters believed that the moment had arrived to restore the glory of the imperial court. The Emperor Daigo, who lived at a time when the court had no rivals and effective rule was exercised directly from the throne, became Go-Daigo's adopted name and model. Of cardinal importance was the ideology that emerged with the Kemu Restoration. It was a conscious movement to restore the imperial power vis-a-vis -vis the warriors. Two of the movement's greatest spokesmen were Prince Morinaga and Kitabate Chikafusa. Prince Morinaga was Daigo's son, and arch-rival to Ashikaga Takalji. He advocated the militarization of the nobles as a necessary step towards effective rule. Kitabate Chikafusa epitomized what Prince Morinaga was looking for. A Kyoto noble who became the greatest of the imperialist generals, combining the ways of the warrior to his noble upbringing. During the long siege in Hitachi, Chikafusa wrote the Jino Shotoki, one of the most influential works on the legitimacy of the Japanese imperial system ever written. This became one of the ideological bases of the Meiji restoration of the 19th century. However, the Kemu restoration was a failure. It failed for a number of reasons, chief among these Emperor Go-Daigo's unrealistic desire to return to what he perceived to have been a golden age. Although there is no evidence he wanted to go back to higher era policies like Chikafusa, there is clear evidence he believed it possible to restore not only imperial power, but also its culture. He even wrote a treatise called Kenmu Nenshi Jioji for the purpose of reviving court ceremonies that had fallen out of use. In 1336 Ashikaga Takalji rebelled against the imperial court and proclaimed the beginning of a new shogunate. After his proclamation, he was forced to retreat to Kyushu after the imperialist forces of Kitabatekaki attacked and defeated him near Kyoto. This betrayal of the Kamu restoration by Takalji blackened his name in later periods of Japanese history, and officially started the Nanbokucho War. Previous historical views tried to look at the failure of the restoration at the level of ineffectiveness in the area of rewarding lands to the many. Petitions that flooded in from samurai. However, it is now clear that, at the most important level, the judicial organs that determined land dispute cases, the restoration was effective. This forces us to conclude that Takalji's rebellion and desire to create a new warrior regime was a prime determinant in the restoration's failure. His rebellion encouraged a large body of dissatisfied warriors who desired to see the creation of another military regime modeled after Kamakura. The Nanbokucho War was an ideological struggle between loyalists who wanted the emperor back in power, and those who believed in creating another military regime modeled after Kamakura. It was as if the two previous periods in Japanese history, the Heian and the Kamakura, were clashing on the ideological level. Noble warriors like Kitabate Chikafusa were pragmatic about the need for warriors to participate in the restoration on the instrument level, but on the ideological level a severe divergence between Chikafusa and Takalji polarized the leaders for many years to come. Hammered together during wartime, the emergence of the Muramachi regime followed on the heels of the restoration's failure, vassalage ties and the rise of the Muramachi Bakufu. Serious fighting between the two sides raged on for nearly 30 years before supporters of the new warrior regime gained the upper hand. Ashikaga Takalji relied on three main policies to accomplish the task of assembling power. The half-tax policy of dividing estate lands, vassalage ties to samurai housemen, the use of Shugo lords as bakufu governors and vassals in the provinces, 
Both the vassalage ties with the samurai and control over Shugo lords were established after the regime had solidified in the 1350s. These two hierarchies were the most important connections in determining the shogun's power. The bureaucratic organs are the most difficult to assess because the early bureaucracy was altered after the Kano disturbance, and much of these eventually concerned just Kyoto and Yamashiro province. The estate from Kamakura to Muramachi the half-tax policy was straightforward. It was a drastic policy of recognizing the legality of samurai incursions on estate lands, but at the same time guaranteed the survival of the estate system. In the Kamakura period, the vassalage ties between the samurai stewards and the Kamakura regime were intermediary because they placed the samurai steward in a position where he was answerable at the same time to both Kamakura and Kyoto. As a samurai he was placed in a direct vassalage relationship to the shogun as a member of his house in a fictive kinship tie. As a steward, the samurai became a shogunal houseman and trusted vassal, and given the management of an estate that legally belonged to a noble in Kyoto. This is where the intermediary nature of Kamakura vassalage ties lies. As a vassal of the warrior regime in Kamakura he was answerable to the shogun in the form of military service and dues. But as a manager of an estate owned by a noble, he had to pay rent to the latter. The stability of the Kamakura system of rule rested upon the regime's guarantee of stewardship rights to the dominant warriors, and of rent and land ownership rights to the noble proprietor. Through the vassalage ties to samurai stewards, the new warrior regime was grafted onto the older estate system, and in the process bridged the conflicting tendencies that were latent between the upstart warriors and the nobles. The samurai stewards who had direct vassalage ties to the shogun or the Hojo regents were also known as housemen. The tradition of the Kamakura housemen was a prestigious one, and set the precedent for what followed in the Muramachi period. Yoritomo and the Hojo regents were only concerned about controlling their own housemen, consciously limiting themselves to hearing the land dispute cases of their own vassals and rewarding stewardship rights to their followers, letting other disputes from other groups be taken care of by the civil administration. This precedent was followed by the Ashikaga shoguns as they endeavored to protect the interests of their house vassals against the incursions of the Shugo lords throughout the Muramachi period. Not only were Shugo given more power as lords of the provinces, but the half-tax policy that Takaji used to divide estate lands multiplied the number of fiefs owned outright by samurai warriors. However, Takaji could have gone further if he had followed the advice of his trusted general's brothers Ko no Moronao and Ko no Moro Yasu, who wanted to do away with estates altogether. What emerged was a redrawing of the estate system where warrior interests predominated, but noble interests were still preserved. In helping to preserve the estate system, the half-tax measure was a policy that still managed to connect the rights of the noble with those of the warrior. The half-tax policy began as an emergency tax designated for military rations collected during wartime. Half the income from particular temple, shrine and estate lands in the provinces of Mino, Omi and Owari would be taken to support armies of the Muramachi regime. Increasingly, this was reinterpreted and changed by Takaji as the permanent acquisition of half the land for the purpose of infoffing note B vassals. This was a radical departure from previous practice. As was indicated above, during the Kamakura period, most of the lands, particularly in the central and western provinces of Honshu, were owned by the nobles, but managed as stewardships by Kamakura house vassals, uniting both the interests of the nobles and the interests of the warriors together to in the estate institution. With the advent of the half-tax measure, Takaji was removing one half of the estate lands from noble control and giving it in fief to his warriors. Rise of local samurai When the Nanboku-Cho conflict broke out, vassalage ties became more serious. 
During the relatively peaceful Kamakura period, military skills were not placed at a premium. But after the outbreak of civil war this criterion became the most important one. A new intermediary consideration emerged in the vassalage ties of the post-1336 environment. The need for loyalty and a tighter tie between lord and vassal. The tighter ties between the shogun and his vassals emerged as a result of the need for military action against rivals. Vassalage ties were either established by the Ashikaga or there was a risk of losing a potential warrior to another warrior hierarchy controlled, at best by emerging Shugo lords loyal to the Ashikaga, and at worst by rival imperialist generals. So, in a true sense, vassalage ties during the Civil War period were used to bridge potential conflict through the recruitment of warriors. At the same time that vassalage ties tightened between samurai and shogun, the legitimacy of these ties were solely tested. This apparent paradox is logically explained by the existence of many claims to samurai loyalty that were presented towards rival imperialist generals, Shugo lords, and even towards local samurai alliances. A few examples will illustrate the emergence of vassalage ties between the shogun Ashikaga Takaji and his new houseman. The Kobayakawa family became loyal vassals when they were entrusted with defending Ashikaga interests in the province of Aki province after Takaji had retreated to Kyushu in 1336. Another Aki samurai family, the Mori clan, became vassals of Takaji in 1336, and served under Komuro Yasu until the outbreak of the Kano incident. In the 1350s, the Mori sided with the enemies of Takaji, Tadayoshi and his adopted son Tadafuyu, and not until the 1360s were they back again as vassals of the Shogun. Vassalage ties to the Kawashima clan and other warrior families near Kyoto were established by Takaji in the summer of 1336 in the latter's drive to retake the capital. The Kawashima case is of considerable interest because of a document pertaining to the terms of vassalage bearing Takaji's signature. They would exchange military service for stewardship rights over half of Kawashima estate leaving the other half in possession of the noble proprietor in the form of rent.